Okay, so I'm here today with Kay, and we are going to be doing an interview about the Flint water crisis that took place in 2014. Um, Kay actually lived there with her family at the time, and we are going to hear her story today. So hi Kay, how are you? I'm good. You're good? Okay, that's good. Alright, so I'm just going to start out with some pretty basic questions. So when did you and your family move to Flint? 2013. In February, right? Um, yeah. Yeah? 14. February of 14. Okay, that's alright. It was a long time ago. I, I understand. And why did you move to Flint? Um, because my daughter was there. Okay. My husband. And your husband? Yeah. You moved there. Why, why did you move there because for your husband? Because he was sick and I needed help. Because your husband was sick and you needed help. Okay. All right. Um, and when did you, you guys moved to Flint in February of 2014. When did you first notice the problem with the Flint water? Did you notice it when you first moved there or a while after you'd been there? When did you start to really notice a problem? Shortly after we were there. Shortly after you were there? Okay. I have a problem with any city water, so... You you don't but trust city water in the no, first place, then? No, you You didn't no. trust the water from the minute you got there? No. Okay. Okay. So, but you didn't notice a problem right away. There wasn't like a distinct, no. this, there's something no. wrong with this water. No. Okay. Okay. You just were skeptical of it from the start. Yes. Okay. Alright, and so... It, so basically... You didn't notice the problem until after they switched over their water supply, oh, right? Automatically. Automatically. Okay, so let's talk about that a little bit. So when you first moved to Flint, they were using a water supply that came from like Huron, correct? I guess so. Yeah. That's what correct. you were told. That's correct. What I okay. Was told. Okay. And then after that, they switched over to a different system. To yeah, they sure did. To their own Flint oh, they system. They sure did. They took it out of the river. They took it out of the Flint River. Okay. No, it's like the river coming out. It smelled just like the river coming out. So as soon as they did that, you noticed a smell. Right you noticed an odor. Right away. Okay. All right. Okay. So then, um, what what did the government say when this started? When when people started to notice this and they started well, to complain? Everything was okay. They were doing everything necessary, as always, quote quote, to keep everybody from not getting sick. Right. right. Okay. Okay. And um. So, did they did the city tell you to take any precautions oh, um, or do right anything away. particular? Not right away. And do you remember even roughly when they started to finally start telling people to take precautions? Because I know that the Flint water was in the summer. It was in the summer. Okay, because I know Flint water. The rest changed. of the neighborhood started to complain, and it was in the summer. And okay. I told them then something was wrong with it. Something and you knew their that animals were was getting wrong. their animals were getting. And I told them there was something wrong with the water right from the start. Yeah. And did you have animals? Yeah. But, but they didn't drink it. Your animals didn't drink it. So your animals didn't get sick. Because you were smart and you knew <laughs> that my don't animals drink the water. They don't drink the water. So then I take no. it you and your family didn't drink the water no, either. No. Okay. Did you do anything else with the water? Well, Wash they dishes. washed the dishes. We washed our bodies. We washed our clothes. Um, so you just didn't drink it. They didn't drink it. Or cook with it, I Or imagine. cook with it after they changed it. Right. Okay. All right. And we did fish. And we boiled the water for the fish, but it didn't do any good. It still killed the fish. Oh, no, that's interesting. So your, your family had, like, an aquarium. We had, right? we had two aquariums. I had to constantly mess with them because the fish were getting sick. And then come to find out it was the water, and it didn't do no good to boil the water. By then, they're telling you to boil the water. Well, do it, boiling the water does no good when oh. it kills the fish. Yeah, so that's an in, that's interesting to the economical or the ecosystem as well. I wonder how many fish in the in Flint have died from the water. That's interesting. Okay. Um. And did anyone from the city ever come to your home and test your water? No. No. Did you? Did anyone from the city ever tell you you needed to have your water tested? Uh, they started saying you can have your water tested, but... They started saying you could, but not that it was not necessarily it, recommended. Not, they said that everything was fine with that water. They were putting it through this... No. Okay. 
They said everything was fine. Which is really interesting looking back on it because we also know, you know, I know just from the research of this topic that they changed the water over in 2014 in April, as a matter of fact, of 2014. So I find it really interesting that they never came out with anything until summer of 2014 for people to even take precautions. That's, that's interesting to me. But I also know that um, there were 12 cases of Legionnaire's oh, disease. Rain. Well, I don't know how many cases there were, but there were 12 deaths from Legionnaire's mm -hmm. disease. Did anybody say anything to you about Legionnaire's disease? No, ma'am. No, and the reason I ask is because you, you mentioned before that your husband was sick, correct? Yeah. Yeah. And what was your husband sick with? Lung cancer. He had lung cancer. So to someone like you you and your husband, the fact that people were getting ill from a sickness that's created in the lungs, Legionnaire's disease, would have probably been significant, correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. And I, I just wanted to, to point that out because I don't think it's ever been discussed the the amount of people that were already ill, such as your husband, with, with breathing difficulties and those type of things that were more prone to this disease. They actually came out and said that they were more prone to this disease, Most but yet, definitely. I'm hearing that your family was never warned of this or told no, of this or anything before it came out on the news, I assume is where no. you heard it then? Yeah. Like, like the rest of us? Yeah. <laughs> After the fact. Wow, okay, and I already asked you about animals. Um, and you didn't notice any change in your overall animal's health, correct? Because they weren't no, drinking the water. No, they're not drinking the water. Okay. All right, awesome. And I asked you about precautions. Um, anything wrong with the water? Let's see what else we've got here. Um, so if, if you could say anything to the officials responsible in the disaster in Flint, what would you say to them today? That they don't really care. That they don't care? No. They're more concerned with politics than saving people's lives. They don't care. It, it's about getting rid of those people. Take a look at what lives there. interesting insight. It's an insight I've had most of my life. I have connections to Flint through my ex-husband. You do? Yeah. Is that his why family, your daughter was his there? His sister used to live there, yes. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. so um, what advice would you give the people of Flint who are suffering with this crisis <laughs> today? Get out? Get out. That's what you did, huh? That's what I did. As soon Shortly as we could, we got out. And thank God you're living to tell tell about it today. And we were homeless when we did so, and we didn't care. <laughs> I'd be homeless and live where water's going to kill live you. Live where water's going to kill you. Hey, and and I think that's great. You know, you do what you got to do for your family, huh? Yep. Yep. All right. And how did the Flint water crisis affect you emotionally um, when you found out about about the water supply? How did that make you feel? Sad. It, it's sad. People need water to live and they know it. They herd you into the city and then they destroy your and they destroy your water. That's pretty funny. It's interesting. Okay, and um, how about the the how about when waiting for action to be taken? Um, again, you said that they didn't tell you anything, right? Right. And um, since moving from Flint, how has this experience impacted your view of the water supply in your current hometown? It makes me leery of water. I it mean, makes you leery of water. I, I can never was that. leery of water before. I drink a lot of water, and now I don't drink as much. So you don't drink as much water as a result of this crisis. Yep. And I think it's impacted the way I feel. In what way? Health-wise, water is important and I didn't used to feel so icky and the way I feel now. And I think that has something to do with it. Because you don't drink as much water. I don't drink as much water, yeah. Um, and again, you said your husband had cancer, correct? Yeah. Okay. 
Okay. And you said that that was lung cancer, correct? Yeah. And when was he diagnosed with lung cancer? Um, Just roughly. I, I don't know. 2013. Okay. A year from he di when he died, which was, what, March 14th, so a year okay. that previous year. Okay. So he only lived about a month or a so year, after the crisis almost started. Almost a year he had it. He lived only a year after his diagnosis, and he died a month, yes, about okay. a month. Okay. All right, and how old was he? 61. And how long did he back <coughs> for you? said a year. I'm a sorry. year. That's okay. I mean, I'm keeping me for feeding yourself. Um, and do you think the contaminated water combined with your husband's illness hastened his death in any way? You really I, can't I say. I really can't say. That's okay. That's okay. You're not a health professional. You shouldn't have to. Um, and did any of his doctors have anything to say about no. whether the Flint water crisis no. contributed to his death? No. No. He was going to the VA and no, they didn't say nothing. That's a whole other story. I see. That, and is there anything else you'd like to expand on that? What do you mean that's a whole other story? That he was going to the VA? Yeah. This period, it just, that's a whole nother story. That's a whole nother story. Okay. Um, and did they say anything at all to you in regards of the Flint water crisis and your husband's health? Like the people that came to care for him? No. I assume he had people coming yeah. to care for him and nobody he was said Ill. anything about the water. None of their, none of the hospice people that were coming. By then he was in hospice. He wasn't going to the doctors anymore. Okay. So he didn't actually see a doctor at that point. No. He just saw like a hospice worker. Yeah. Okay. Um, and did they show any concern over the fact that he was bathing in this water? She nope. said you bathed your family in this water. No. None no. whatsoever. No. None. Yeah. Okay. Um, and what about the fact that he was breathing in the fumes from this water? Because, because sure they have mentioned... I know I breathed in the fumes when I washed the dishes. Yeah, you mentioned an odor, and I know that even in my research it mentioned that um, there was an odor, that people had mentioned an odor, so I just wonder if anybody said anything over the fact that your husband was breathing in these I things. actually haven't went that far in my doctor's exam yet. I got a thing in there because I was there. I can get checked for things. And my lungs aren't right since I came home, but... Yeah. Well, I think that's probably something you should get on then. You need to get that checked out. You definitely need to make your doctor aware that you were exposed to the Flint water crisis, for sure. Okay, so, um, but they never said anything about your husband no. breathing in the water or anything like Nobody that. Nobody breathing in the water. Um, and as a lung as a lung cancer patient, was that was this concerning to you? Like because your husband was it more concerning to you because your husband was a lung cancer patient to know that this, the water was killing people from from a Legionnaire's disease that goes in the lungs? Well, by the time I knew that it was done. It was done. He was dead. By the time you knew that it was done. Okay. Yeah, he was dead by the time I knew anything about Legionnaires and anything they could do to the lungs. It was months after the water change before they ever said that people were getting sick. They did what they usually do, try to deny it. Okay, and then um, do you think that by failing to act quickly to the Flint water crisis, the Michigan government aided in your husband's death or in your current lung condition yes. today? Yes. Okay. And other people. I mean, and it's not people. just me. Oh, I, I. They're aiding in a lot of people's suffering. And do you think others like him who were severely ill or elderly also died as a result of the Flint water crisis? 
And what would you... Oh, I already asked you that. I put that down twice. Sorry. And what would you like to see happen to the officials involved in the crisis? Be held accountable. Which never seems to happen. And what would you call accountable? What would, what would that look like to you? I'm not sure. If they can't fix it, they can't take it back. Just, I'm not sure. Okay. Just held accountable is enough sometimes. I agree. Outed. To be outed? Yeah. They're good at blaming other people for what they do. And what do you think the solution is to the situation regarding the Flint water crisis? What do you think the solution would be? <laughs> I don't know if there is one anymore. Many people at the time said that the solution would be just to switch it back. Do you agree with that? Yes. But they're going to have to fix other things because they have a whole contaminated system. <coughs> Okay, and do you have any other thoughts that you would like to add or tell me about the Flint water crisis? Mm -hmm. Not really. No? I think I pretty much. Did you pretty much get it all out there? Mm -hmm. As much as I can. As much as you can. <laughs> okay, well, I think that this was a great interview, Kay, and I really appreciate your time. And now I say, let's go get that cup of coffee we've been waiting for. Okay. All right.